Hello, welcome back to Oracle PLSQL tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about stored program units. So this is a piece of code that we have written to figure out what is the uh, what is the incremental salary to an employee. So essentially, this program unit, if you give a employee ID, then for that employee ID, we will calculate what is the new salary and the new salary is based on some condition that if he is a manager and his salary is less than 2500 then he got some raise so whatever rules we have written those rules inside the case statement and uh, using if if condition we are giving we are calculating the new salary well so let's say this is the PLSQL uh, anonymous block that we have written uh, in our previous uh, classes okay so let's say whenever this user say user number one so he is basically giving from his SQL plus uh, prompt he is executing this PLSQL program so in that case what happens this PLSQL program is going to the database and get executed and then database is returning him the new salary okay so now let's say there is another user user 2 he also needs to calculate the incremental salary so in that case what happens he either writes the complete PLSQL block himself again or he will ask user number one to give him this piece of code what he has okay so let's assume that user number two gets exactly the same set of code that user number one has and then he is going to just change instead of 7782 7783 so that he can again submit this PLSQL block and then he gets another output so what happens whenever when we are going to have many users who wants to run same piece of code again and again so in that case if we maintain the way that we are doing either you know either we have to depend very much on user number one to give him right piece of code all right and and look another problem let's say something you know some rule changed and then we want to uh, modify this piece of code and then let's say we modify instead of 2500 we modify this block uh, this if conditions uh, where v underscore sal is less than 3500 okay so in that case let's say this is the version 2 of the software so since user number 1 is modified that one so user number 1 runs with version 2 of the software and it may happen that user 2 uh, all other users are running the old version version 1 of the software so in that case uh, the user 1 user 2 user, th user, t user 10 they are not going to see consistent result because they are running different piece of code all right so so and another thing is that like you know, that means if whenever you're going to modify something it is very difficult to maintain because all of them are running a individual copy of the PLSQL program units so how do we solve this one so the solution is to instead of you know this piece of code whatever you are seeing like how about storing this piece of code inside the database and then so let's say this is our our would be solution is going to be so this is a database so what what first is going to happen like you know that piece of code what we is written by the user number one so user number one basically first thing is going to create and store that uh, PLSQL uh, you know uh, sub program units inside the database let's call this program units as P1 then he just notify user number two, user number three that go and then there is an there, there is an uh, procedure or there is a there is an sub program whose name is P1. Go on and run that. Okay. So no business of you know giving the code to user number two or user number three. Even user number two can just go to the database and then check if there is a procedure or there is a sub program units called P1 and then he just can execute that one. So in this case what happened is that there is a centralized copy and there is only one copy alright so only one copy and then all the users are executing that same program units if tomorrow user number one or user number two any of this user wants to modify that piece of code they can modify and after the modification all of them again is going to run same program units okay so this is why since we are storing the code in the database therefore it is called stored program units stored program units are of three different types 
one is procedure next one is function and last one is package so we are going to discuss all this stored program units in this you know in, in, the, in the subsequent videos and what happens is that all this stored program units has a name they can take parameter can take parameter and return parameter and return parameters and number three they can be stored in data dictionary okay so this is in the database so that is a data dictionary and number four all users can call the sub program okay and then also we do have some sort of security mechanism like if a user has access to that sub program then he can execute okay so this is what is the characteristics of a stored program units so what is the advantage like you know, let's see discuss what is the advantage why you know basically by doing this what I did I have easy maintenance easy maintenance so that means the problem that I was facing here like you now if somebody is going to modify the piece of code then I have to notify all of them and you know as the number of people increase number of users increase to run those things then the chaos will also increase and then we may not be able to maintain it properly okay so therefore by putting a centralized place we can have only one copy and then other you know everybody can uh, run that one and number two is security so security means like as I told you right so this program unit p1 is inside the database the way that you are accessing a table or you are not accessing a table depends depending on if you have a privilege on the table or not similarly what we can do we can have a execute privilege on this procedure for example if I do not give execute privilege to user number 2 then user number 2 cannot run that whereas in the previous case if user number 2 has an access to this PLSQL program units from user number 1 he can he can run okay so there is no no such security mechanism in the previous anonymous block case number three is performance okay. so what what is uh, going on here is that whenever we are running this PLSQL code this PLSQL code is already there in the database and this is already parsed that means all the syntax error or syntax and all these things has been checked okay therefore the first time whenever we are going to going to create the procedure okay so whenever we're going to store first time the procedure that time the syntax will be checked and then that means the code is parsed and in the subsequent time we are going to just execute but whereas in this previous case if this code is going to be executed by user number one user number two user number three and so on every time the code is going to the database is going to be parsed and second thing is that if you see this code is existing already in the database therefore there is no network transform trans transfer from this user number two to the database so basically the code is available in the parse version inside database you just go and execute it therefore there is no network latency so no network latency in this case so therefore the performance of a stored procedure is going to be much better than if I run in anonymous uh, block okay so and then we have integrity and all this thing data integrity that means either this PLSQL program is going to run once uh, just completely or never so like you now for example what I can do I can basically like you know, since this code this code is with me I can I can divide this code but we cannot do such kind of things in a PLSQL stored uh, sub program okay. so now let's see like you know so, so uh, as, as we understood so this is the this is a concept behind that why we are doing uh, why we are creating a, a stored uh, sub program units and in this video we are going to discuss how to create a 
so how to develop a procedure okay or a stored procedure okay so to develop a stored procedure first thing is we need an editor to write code okay so once you write code then using your sql plus so let's say this is your sql plus sql star plus or, or there are some other tools like sql developers and all this thing what you do you need to load this code to the database okay so let's say load so this is your source code so you load the source code to the database and then the database is going to compile the first time whenever you load this source code it will compile okay so let's say this is the compile step if the compilation is not successful then it goes to step number one so you can go back to the editor and then you rectify your errors so after compilation we have two things either is successful or there's a failure if it's a, if it's a failure then by calling a command called show errors you can see what is the error and then go back and then edit you know go back to the editor and you know correct your PLSQL program and again do the steps like you know load the code and then again compile so once this compilation is done and once this compilation is successful it is going to have a parsed version of the code parsed code okay and and that's it and after that what you can do you can tell the users to execute the the, the program unit okay so here's a summary using editor to write the code then using SQL plus we are going to load the code to the Oracle server and the first time whenever whenever we are loading it will automatically compile if there is an compilation error we will go back and then modify you know fix the code and then again do the load loading and then if the compilation is successful then we get the parse code and that's it next time what you're going to do we're going to execute next users or any, any you know after this code is after this source code is is loaded and compiled properly we can execute to get the result so with this let's take a sample program okay so what I'm going to do I have already written a sample program that is called hello world and this is how I'm going to write I'm going to write create procedure hello world as x I declare a variable here then I assign that variable to hello world and I'm just putting that uh, I'm just printing that uh, hello world okay so this is the very simple PLSQL procedure and so this is my first step I have written this thing okay and then I'm going to go to my SQL plus then by giving a command so and like and uh, I have stored this uh, PLSQL procedure at temp and my PLSQL procedure name is hello world.sql so if this is the case what I'm going to do I'm going to write So, so this is the procedure I, I have created since there is no compilation error therefore I don't have to see any show errors or anything and then my if, if your procedure if your procedure is compiled properly then the server will give you an output called procedure created okay so now I have so now basically I am in this step so now I am I have a par step okay so how do I execute this procedure since the procedure name is hello world and in this simple procedure I don't I didn't take any parameter okay therefore what I'm going to do I'm going to run this procedure by this command called execute and then the PLSQL procedure name the PLSQL procedure name is hello world so before that I just want to set server output to on so that I can see the 
dbms output put line messages and then I write exec hello world okay so now what I'm, I'm executing this thing and I'm getting hello world as output this was expected output and then I have this PLSQL procedure successfully completed so this is one way that you can write you can write a notepad however there is another way that you can also do by using your Oracle SQL developer if you go to Oracle SQL developer you expand your connection tab and go back and then write new procedure so let's say I want to create another procedure called test okay and test and then you so saying that already exists so let's say I want to give test one two three okay then so now this is also another way of creating that same PLSQL procedure instead of using notepad I can use this editor given by SQL developer and so that I can I can do it much more easily okay and then let's say I want to do dbms underscore output dot put underscore line okay. and then I do right click and I say compile okay so if it's compiled so uh, if you can see there is a procedure called test one two three then exactly similarly I can go exec test one two three and also give me hello world so what we have done we have done two we have created two PLSQL procedures one using notepad and second one using SQL developer so both of them now stored in the database and any user who has access to those procedure can execute those procedure by calling exec so here is another so once we created this procedure let's say we want to remove the procedure right let's say let's say we, we after some time we determine that um, you know we don't need that procedure anymore right so to, how do you remove the procedure to remove the procedure you do a command called drop procedure and procedure name so if I want to remove test 1 2 3 my command should be, should be drop procedure test 1 2 3 if you want to remove um, procedure uh, hello world I have to do drop procedure hello world okay so that is the that is how you are going to remove the procedure and second thing is that instead of let, let's say you know you, you are creating using this using your uh, notepad okay so it's a better thing to do create or replace so what create or replace does like if there is already a procedure called hello world then if you just write create then it's going to give an error because there's already an existing procedure available so therefore you need to do create or replace so create or replace first drops the procedure and recreate the procedure with the new value with the new new code all right so therefore you always use create or replace and, and last thing that probably you want to know let's say like you know we create this created this hello world from uh, using our uh, notepad so that PLSQL procedure you can also find out by clicking on the SQL developer hello world so you can see this thing so what is happening is that this stored procedure is stored in a data dictionary table and what we are trying to do we are trying to query to a data dictionary table and then get the source code from there okay so this is how you are going to play with uh, PLSQL procedure in the next videos we are going to d discuss more about how to pass parameters and all these things thanks